The motorcycle will do field service as a video platform and we need it to be ultra reliable. In our first attempts to start the engine, we discovered after a great deal of cardio workout that this engine wasn't going to start and a compression test revealed that the compression is low. A compression test with a compression gauge is inaccurate in that it doesn't pinpoint the specific cause of the low compression. The leak down test is conclusive and will show whether we have a seal at the piston rings, the valves, or any casting or head gasket issues. The leak down test begins by placing the piston at top dead center on the compression stroke. And the way to determine whether you're at top dead center is to align the timing mark with top dead center. First remove the spark plug because we're talking about top dead center on the compression stroke. We want the piston to be at top dead center with all of the valves closed. It's not good enough to simply align the mark. We need to be coming up on the compression stroke. So with the spark plug removed, we'll make certain that the piston is rising and pushing air out of the spark plug hole as it rises to top dead center. To readily find top dead center, I like to lift the bike up so that the rear wheel is suspended and place the transmission in a higher gear. With the spark plug removed, I can rotate the rear tire and very slowly turn the crankshaft until I bring the timing mark around on the top dead center position. And if I tap the tire gently, you can see that I can bring it right up to the index line and I want absolute top dead center. It's very important that the piston be right at the top because I'm going to put compressed air above the piston and if it's over or under top dead center, the air will push the piston downward. I can also look down the cylinder to make sure that the valves are closed on this engine application. That's not difficult to see. I look through the spark plug hole and I am definitely coming up to top dead center on the compression stroke. With the timing mark indexed, the piston should be right out top dead center. The principle of the leak down tester is to measure the percentage of leakage out of the cylinder. In this case, it's a sealed cylinder, the upper cylinder of the engine with the valves closed and the piston at top dead center. We index this for zero. If you want to see what's actually going on with a leak down tester, we're putting air into the upper cylinder through this adapter. And if it were sealing completely, you'd have a zero percent leakage. A normal cylinder will leak about eight percent on a really good engine, eight to ten percent. 20% might be acceptable. Worth mentioning with the XR650R engine is that you cannot have any of the valves off their seats, including the decompression release or the start decompression or any of those functions when you're doing a cylinder leak down test. If you were to have a valve off its seat, obviously there would be a huge amount of leakage past that valve or those valves. I've been at motorcycle work for many years. I had an independent motorcycle repair shop years ago and used to make ad-lib tools like this adapter for the Honda XR350R and XR500R that has a very tight access to the spark plug. This adapter would be used with my snap-on leak detector to enable testing cylinder leakage on those engine types. A distinct advantage of a cylinder leak down test is that the piston is at top dead center. This means that the highest wear point in the cylinder is the point at which we will be checking the pressure at the top. And right below the ledge, the piston rings have the least likelihood of sealing. So if we want to know what the maximum piston ring or seal wear is, the best place to check it is with the piston at top dead center. By comparison, a compression check does not do this. A compression check, in fact, may gather air from the bottom of the cylinder, even a worn tapered cylinder, and press it to the top. The cylinder leak down test is actually a test of compressed air going into the combustion chamber with the piston at top dead center and the valves closed. In this case, we are measuring the percentage of leakage from the combustion chamber past the rings, the valves, the head gasket, or a casting if there is an excessive loss of pressure, we know that the engine is in trouble. We begin by calibrating the gauge and starting out with a zero reading. With the piston at top dead center and all of the valves closed, I can now apply compressed air and read the actual cylinder leakage. 
In this case, the leak is 95% shown on the gauge. This means that 95% of the air that's going into that combustion chamber is leaking out of the engine. That can be past the valves, past the piston rings, past the head gasket if it's leaking, or past a casting crack. So we'll want to pinpoint where that air is going. But we know we have a major problem because the highest percentage of leak that I would want to see is around 20%. And an engine that is brand new and sealing properly should be more like 8 to 10% cylinder leak. To pinpoint this 95% leakage, I'll go to the exhaust pipe, the carburetor intake, and the crankcase breather to see where that air is going. And I should find a steady stream of it with that much leakage. Here's conclusive evidence that the exhaust valves are leaking. Listen to this. The intakes are leaking as well. When I cap off the exhaust, that leaking air comes out the intake. This means both the intake and the exhaust valves are leaking on this engine. With this volume of air leaking out of the exhaust and intake valves, we can now check to see if the crankcase is also getting air, which would mean that air is moving past the piston rings. It's very easy to observe the amount of dirt accumulated inboard of the air cleaner. This same dirt could have gone past the valves and damaged the valves as well as the piston rings and the nicosil in the upper cylinder. At this stage, the next thing to do is tear the upper engine down and find out what the extent of damage is. So our next step is to tear the upper cylinder down, remove the rocker box and camshaft, remove the cylinder head itself, remove the cylinder. The cylinder we know is damaged from a visual inspection and we now know that the valves are leaking as well. Tearing this engine down we have a pretty good idea of what to expect. Stay tuned as we move into rebuilding the upper end of the engine. Again this is a Honda XR650R and we're going to rebuild the top end.